Modern software development and delivery has evolved more and more aligned with the supply chain system, where um, a final product is often assembled with a bunch of uh, components that are supplied by a, a chain of upstream suppliers. In this system, the trust uh, afforded to the partners and the sources is a fundamental element that makes it work, which in turn turns it into the foremost and primary target in any attack. The prevalence of open source library uh, in the software composition and the trust that we put in them makes them especially attractive to bad guys. According to a 2018 security and risk report, 96% of the applications scanned contained open source components, with many of them containing more open source code than proprietary code. Our trust of open source library following a once trusted, always trusted model can be misplaced. We've already seen a proliferation of uh, trust attacks in 2018 and 2019. The defining characteristic of the OSL trust attack that sets it apart from other software security attacks is that the organization that's breached, for instance, the host of the open source library, is oftentimes not the intended victim or the target. The hacker is just using the open source library as a Trojan horse, exploiting the trust of the community in order to disseminate their malware. If an open source library code an organization had knowingly used in its system later found out to have uh, vulnerabilities, which then were exploited by an attacker, that is not considered as an OSL trust attack, but rather a regular software security attack. There are a few ways these open source libraries can create security risks for organizations. The first risk is undetectable malware. The implicit trust afforded to these open source libraries are oftentimes not moderated. That means site managers and developers pick up the infected libraries and use them uh, without realizing that malware has been added to them. The second one is the infected supply chain. The prolific use of open source libraries across enterprises means that if one piece of code is infected, a ripple effect will carry that infected code across multiple businesses. Once an infected library is in use, it's likely that the entire software development supply chain will be impacted by the attack. So the third risk is related to legitimate looking um, code. In addition to inserting malware into genuine open source libraries, uh, bad actors can also create, curate, and, and run their own uh, rogue open source libraries. Given the large number of open source libraries organization uses daily, it is very difficult for them to distinguish the ones that rogue from their legitimate counterparts, and developers can be easily duped into using them. The last but not least is the massive uh, data leaks potential. Cyber criminals can leverage malware insert into the open source libraries after they are incorporated in, into the applications and websites to create backdoors. Since these backdoors have been created by trust open source libraries, they are nearly undetectable, allowing bad guys to uh, spy on users, steal data, as well as disguise a wide range of illicit activities. At the moment, there's no effective solution to this problem. As a matter of fact, we have just begun to realize that this is a problem that deserves our urgent attention and wider discussion within the development community. As a first step towards the right direction, I highly recommend using code signing for all open source libraries. Code signing has been proven to be a very effective security control for giving identities to software that proves their originality and integrity. It has been very effective for all kinds of software. I think it will be just as effective for open source library. 